if there is one place in Texas that I want to talk shit about, it's going to be Orange, Texas. And if y'all don't know where Orange, Texas is, Orange, Texas is in the southeastern area of Texas right before you hit Lake Charles. You know, if you're heading into Louisiana, uh, normally you have to pass through Orange, Texas in order to get there. But, anywho, I remember this was back in 2020. Our stupid mayor, Nirenberg, who is a liberal scumbag of San Antonio, uh, was putting all these kind of restrictions on, like, going to parks, going to lakes, going to creeks you know you know i used to be an avid fisherman back then so i planned on a long distance trip to go to lake charles because louisiana didn't have so much did lake charles especially didn't have so many restrictions as far as like you know going outside your home you know they weren't so uh, authoritarian about the whole ordeal when the first phase of the pandemic came about but anyway i digress i try to go to lake charles Um, I ended up um, stuck in Vinton because my vehicle broke down. Um, I think it was my alternator for my old Explorer that went bad. So I had a tow truck company take me and bring me over to a mechanic shop down in Orange, Texas. So I decided, well, you know, since I'm already out here, why don't we do a little experiment? You know, let's see what it's like to be homeless for an entire day so i went by the bridge right by i-10 and i fell asleep as soon as the sun went out mosquitoes were gone and everything like that so i was able to catch some z's um i wake up i'm exploring the town um it's a very mucky swampy shithole is what it is and the people over there um there is only really one one term I can name them. I can really refer to these type of people. They are a bunch of inbred hillbillies. It seems like their entire family tree does not have a fork in there or have a fork in it. And one of these inbred hillbillies chased me right off, right next to a Studio 6 off of I-10, right next to a, it was like an orange diner and there was a waffle house next to it. So I'm walking over there saying, hey, you know, I wanna go get some food. You know, I did have a weapon on me just in case anything did happen. I had a 38 uh, double action revolver. So this uh, tall, bald guy, he, well, he's a little taller than me. I'm about 6'2". He was probably like six foot three, six foot four, skinny, probably in his um, mid to late 40s, bald. Um, and he asked me, uh, hey, I know you from somewhere. I said, I doubt it. I said, I'm not from this town. And he goes, where are you from? And I said, um, Georgia. And then he just gets all excited. He goes, oh my God, you did not just say you're from Georgia. My mom is from Georgia. Here, come, come, come check this out. Come inside, come inside. So I said, okay. Uh, I had my pistol in my the back of my pants so i checked behind the door and everything like that and the guy was you know didn't really click it at first but it did after maybe a few minutes of talking to him how he was saying that his dad was in illuminati and that he had this special key that had all the money to go down to georgia and he would make my family rich and everything like that and all he needed was 30 dollars. so he pulls out a box and he said he's 30 dollars short of a bus ticket so he pulls out about five twenties, a ten, and a five, and he said he needed thirty dollars, which you know I don't know where y'all from, but thirty dollars just about anywhere in Texas is about how much one gram of meth will cost. So I said uh, I'm kind of I'm actually homeless. I don't really have any money. I just had enough money to buy some food, and then he asked if I wanted to spend the night with him. And that's when my oh shit, you know, signal started popping on. And I said, uh, sure. Uh, well, no, he asked me if, um, after he asked me if I wanted to spend the night, I changed the subject and said, I want to go get something to eat. Sorry, my mustache is just bothering the fuck out of me. And, uh, 
I said, I'm going to go to Waff House to go get something to eat because I'm hungry. And he says, can I go with you? And I said, uh, sure. So I opened the door before he got off the bed and I ran for my life. I ran as fast as I could all the way from the Studio 6. Instead of going to the Waffle House, I went to the diner right next to it and hid behind a wall. Saw him, like, where the windows were, saw him run past the windows to the front of the door, and I said, please don't come inside, please don't come inside, and then he runs fucking back, back to his hotel. Um, so anyway, uh, the waitresses and the short order cooks were looking at me like I was crazy. And uh, I said, you know, that guy is fucking nuts. You know, he asked me if I want to spend the night with him. And they go, oh, he's want, you know, he's always around here, you know. The the girl that was over there, she was like maybe 20, 21. But she actually did give me a free coffee because she said, you know, they were bored all day. They didn't really have that many customers. So, you know, they, uh, they gave me one for free. I took off pretty much. Went the long way. Uh, went north, went through these apartment complexes, kind of went back around to the road that connects to I-10, that kind of goes through it, and then I pretty much hung out there. I probably walked a total of about 15 miles that whole day, but um, I kind of did learn at the end, like when nightfall happened, uh, couldn't sleep. I learned that being homeless in the winter time is a lot better than than the uh, summer because uh, at the summer you know you're not I mean it depends on where you go like if you are homeless and you know and summer help you know comes around and you're living somewhere like Orange Texas or like Beaumont Houston San Antonio or anything like that if you have the money to buy a bus ticket and you don't really have anything tying you down over here uh dude just go north or go like go to like el paso or you know go at, go anywhere that's going to be a little cooler i mean you don't want to really deal with this kind of humidity uh especially the way our heat wave, heat wave is going on this year you know where it's like 100 degrees all fucking month i mean dude fucking almost the whole month of july was like 100 uh, it was a 100 degree month and personally i don't want to deal with it again you know but i don't want to talk about the heat i already did that on my last video but I hope uh, y'all found this entertaining and uh, I'll try to come up with some more stories later on uh, about me being homeless or just me nomading in general. But having said that, I'll catch y'all on a later day. Bye-bye.